What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton and the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we finished up Chapter 2, and we're about to start Chapter 3, looking for um, Raven, who has apparently gone missing, and investigating further into Simon's death. And again, we have our story so far, um, it's probably going to tell a little bit better. Having finally returned to Reinhold Manor with Claudia in tow, Layton and Luke are horrified to discover that a murder has taken place there, there during their absence. Waiting for Luke and Lane at the manor is Police Detective Inspector Chelmy. Upon receiving a report on the murder, he has raced to St. Mysterio to conduct an investigation. He has his suspicions about Luke and Layton. Shortly after the murder, a server or servant of the Reinhold family named Raymond goes missing. At Lady Dahlia's request, Luke and the Professor set out to gather information on his whereabouts. Okay. And so that's that's where we are now. I don't remember exactly what. We were just chatting with Agnes, who I believe told us um, that it was very rare for him to not be there. So we'll we'll ask around town and see if there's anything more to learn. Hey, you two. What are you up to? Let me in on the secret. <clears throat> I got it. I got it. Don't tell me. I told you. I got it. <laughs> Out searching for somebody, huh? Hitting the streets for info, yeah? But sorry, I haven't seen your man. Are you sure you didn't see her anything that might help us? No, no. I got nothing for you. <laughs> Quit asking me about it. Sheesh. Jeez. That's rather suspicious. I see. Well, in any case, thank you for your time. Aw, the gentleman. Oh yeah, and good luck with your crazy search. Two crazy kids on a crazy search, right? Right. I would definitely do not go poking around the tower on the north side of town. Got it? Yeah, you got it. The tower on the north side of town? How do we even get to that part of town? Do you remember that clock tower in the square? I believe we must pass through it to get to the north side of town. Let's go check it out. Ooh, that's exciting. So we're going to get to go to a new segment of um, of town. So cool. Let's head on over. That's the clock tower you were talking about, right, Professor? Yes, quite right. Hmm, someone's standing under the entrance. Are they blocking it? It's Deaky or whatever his name is. I do, out of curiosity though, want to go to um, the puzzle house or whatever it's called. There seems to be a puzzle embedded in this door. I could have sworn there was nothing there a minute ago. Fascinating. This puzzle appears to be acting as some sort of lock for this door. How delightful. Luke, my boy, why don't you give this puzzle a try? I'm almost certain the door will open if you solve it. Exciting. Alright, so we're, here we are. Back into our uh, our puzzle game. So number 58, get the ball out number one. Oh, so it's the first of a series. Can you get the red ball out of the maze? Slide obstructing blocks out of the way to clear a path for the ball. This problem can be solved in as few as 12 moves. Okay, so we obviously need to open up a, a central path um, for the ball to move. Move blocks out of the way by sliding your stylus across them. Move the red ball in a similar fashion. Slide the ball to the hole by moving the blocks. Okay, so interestingly enough, we can actually... Um, we can move the ball. It's not something that we just need to rely on gravity or something like that. Uh, so it's it can be a path that is shifting. It's not that we have to rearrange these in such a way that there is a straight line from the red ball where it is right now to the hole. It's something that can be a little bit more dynamic. Um, so initially looking at our initial moves, uh, if we were to move the blue block on the left, we would be able to then move the green block down one, but ultimately that doesn't do anything. So our first move definitely has to be shifting that block up. And then in terms of what other moves we can do, it would have to be something with this purple block. So we will do that currently. And I believe what we'll eventually need to do is move these up so that we can um, shift this around. So now what we can do is move this that way and unlock that. And now we can actually move the ball a bit, <laughs> which um, is obviously important. And then what are we going to want to do? What we can do is move this down and bring the ball a bit closer. Wow, as few as 12 moves. Okay, well, I mean, because now we could shift it up like this and then left like that and then down. Um, that's obviously 15 moves. So, we did it. I am curious, um, and I'd actually like the ability to go back. I think we, we can go back and see if we could do it in 12 moves. Or hopefully they don't tell us, but... Okay, they don't, luckily. Yeah, I'd be curious to go back to that puzzle in a little bit and see if we could do it in 12 moves as opposed to that um, 15. We had a few extra. Very nice, the door should open right or should open right up now. Get the ball out. One is now in your puzzle index. 
I am curious. I do want to. I do want to briefly look back at the puzzle index and see if we can attempt that again. It was what number fifty-eight? Yeah. Can we try it again? Awesome. So yeah, we can just hop right back into it. That's actually really nice. So the first thing we have to do that is our first move. Okay, that's probably where that's considered one move that way rather than. Um, two moves like we had prior. So now I can shift that over there. And now I can shift this to the right and down. Come on, there we go. <laughs> and this will be significantly more efficient. So again, then I can move this all the way down here. And now we're going to hit that 12. Okay, so it was partially about just number of times you pick up and let go the block or ball because <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did the but same number of moves so we just picked up and let go of the ball more more times to make those count as extra okay I'm also glad that that didn't take too long for those of you that didn't want to see that puzzle again um, but anyways I want to see if we can actually go in this place now what do we have in here an ant coin but who are you granny R why? Howdy. <laughs> Do you often find yourself hopelessly, achingly, painfully stuck on puzzles? Well then, Sonny, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Granny Riddleton's Puzzle Shack. Granny Riddleton? Where can we find this lady? Isn't it obvious? She's right in front of you, boy. No wonder you have trouble solving puzzles. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, you are gazing at the beautiful and clairvoyant Granny Riddleton. Guide to the puzzled puzzlers. Beautiful and clairvoyant? Professor, do you know what she's going on about? <laughs> Oof. Shade. Fret not, Luke. Why don't you let me do the talking here? Sorry to disturb you, Miss Riddleton, but by clairvoyant, do you mean to say that you have psychic powers? Can you do things like, say, pick a criminal out of a crowd or visualize the location of lost objects? Cha, ah, any fortune teller can do that. So what if you can so what if you can see a few days into the future? Big whoop. My specialty you see is puzzles. Puzzles people forget about? Puzzles people miss? Surely you boys have had a few of those, eh? No need to turn red, it happens to the best of puzzlers. What I do, you see, is I take those poor, lost little puzzles and invite them to come stay with me. Wow, so those puzzles that we tried but weren't able to solve, those puzzles are here now? Hehe, <laughs> it looks like you finally figured out what makes me so amazing, boy. I actually, I know I said it last episode, but I really, really appreciate that they include a mechanic like this. Now go ahead and give a knock on the door of that little shack behind me. Inside you'll find rows of cute little jars, each one of them stuffed with a forgotten puzzle. I bet you can find those lost puzzles of yours somewhere in the midst of all my little pretties. <laughs> awesome. I do want to, in the meantime, check on is there anything else of interest in here? Are there any puzzles in here aside from the lost ones? Okay, so yeah, there's, sure enough, um, got puzzle number 17, five card shuffle. This is the one they told us we missed at the end of chapter two. So I do want to check this out. Also, uh, 17 is one of my favorite numbers. Just, if, I guess if that's relevant or if anyone cares. Three of the four images shown below are the exact same picture rotated in a variety of ways. Can you find the odd one out? Okay. Um, so my first guess is that A and C can't be the same. Or no, they actually can be. And in fact, they are because the, uh, the clubs on the left and right are symmetrical. So they can be rotated in such a way, and then the heart and diamond would be normal. So A and C are definitely um, the same, but rotated. So neither of them is the odd one out. So it has to be B or D. We've already eliminated half the options, because there can't be two that are the odd ones out. So let's think then, um, in terms of, I think B is just A rotated 90 degrees to the right, or 90 degrees clockwise. I'm fairly confident that that's the case. I don't see any problems with that. Let's see if we can find any problems with D, which I'm pretty sure is the odd one out. Um, just looking at it, right? It looks like that spade is um, reversed, and then similarly the the heart and the diamond are flipped. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly confident that that's the odd one out. Because even just looking at the relationship between C and D, right? 
looking at that spade in the center, you would have to rotate clockwise 90 degrees to get from C to D. Oh, and that actually looks like it would work. Right? It does. Okay, so I should be thinking about this a little bit harder. <laughs> Three of the four images shown below are the exact same picture rotated. So I think A, C, and D are, are the correct ones then. Because if you take C and rotate it clockwise 90 degrees, you get D. Right? Yeah, um, there's no doubt about that. So now let's look at the relationship between A and C. Um, I think A and C are related in that if you rotate it 180 degrees, they're the same. Are they? Yeah, I think so. But at the same time, it, B looks like if you were to rotate A 90 degrees clockwise, you would get that. So what am I missing? What am I missing? Hmm. This is proving to be a lot more difficult than I had anticipated, actually. I know I said spatial reasoning was tough, but I thought I could, you know, I thought I could do this. Um, and I'm fairly confident that B is just A rotated 90 degrees to the right, and then D is B but rotated 180 degrees. Yeah, I think so. And then if you rotate C 90 degrees clockwise, I think you get D. And if you rotate C 180 degrees, you get A. But one of them is definitely different. I see. I see it. <sighs> very tricky game. Very tricky. So the way they set it up, um, they bait you into thinking that one of them is not going to be an actual rotation of the other, meaning that you can try to... They mess up the rotation somehow, right? They either switch the, the, the heart and the diamond, or the spade is facing the wrong way, or something like that. But the one picture that's an odd one out doesn't have anything to do with the rotations. It's that the club card that is the most distant from the other cards, right? There's like a, there's one club that's more snug between the heart and the diamond, and then there's one club that's way farther out. The club that's farther out is underneath the spade in three of them, and it's on top of the spade in D. So I think that's why D is actually the odd one out here. It doesn't have anything to do with the relation of the cards, I guess, like in an order sense. Um, or have anything to do with the rotation, it's whether or not they're on top of each other, the stacking. Which is something I totally overlooked in the beginning. Yeah, I, I'm fairly confident then that D is actually the odd one out because of the order of the, I guess like the vertical ordering of the clubs and the spades. Wow. <laughs> wow. I think I've got it. Please tell me I got it. I did. Okay. Unbelievable. That's tricky. That is tricky, Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Did I get the pick rats? I did. Okay. This puzzle is fairly straightforward, but catching the subtle difference in the picture can take a while. <sighs> that's too funny. And we got a painting scrap. Interesting. Okay, so that's that's helpful. Um, Alright. Then I don't think there's there's anything else for us to do here, so we'll head on out. Thank you so much. And granny are. And now we will investigate the barrels and all of that jazz 
and then talk to our friends in front of the clock tower. Hey there, you've been pretty busy solving puzzles, yeah? If you want to pass through here, you need to have solved at least 12 puzzles first. But it looks like you've already done that. Hmm. Well, I guess I just lied to you then. <laughs> if you really want to pass through here, you're also going to have to solve one more puzzle. Okay, I was going to say, we've definitely solved at least 12. I think we're at like maybe 16, 17, maybe more. But strange dots. The dice below look normal enough. But if you look carefully, you should see a pattern start to emerge. You know the following. A is equal to 0. B is equal to 9. C is equal to 6. So what does D correspond to? That's just going to be 3. This is related to the face of the clock, right? So the the top um, dot, I guess if you consider this in terms of like maybe like a minute's hand and an hour hand or something like that, um, the top dot is 0. The one on the left is referring to, you know, like the hand being on the left side of the, the face of a clock at 9 o'clock. C is, you know, the very bottom, um, so it would be 6 o'clock. And then D would be 3. And I don't really see any other way to interpret this. So, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go with three here. And this is 20 pick rats, so maybe it is that, that simple. That should do it. There we go. Critical thinking is the key to success. I'm surprised Leighton didn't look at it and be like, Luke, my boy, this is one you should give a go. <laughs> That's right. The dots on each die represent the hands on an analog clock. Okay. Way to go. You've earned it, mister, so come on through. Are you still after that scary cat? We're looking for one of the Reinhold's employees now. He's a man by the name of Raymond. You haven't seen him about, have you? Raymond, huh? Mm, yeah, I think I might have. Oh gosh, where'd I see that guy? Maybe you're better off asking someone else. Go ask Lucy. She's standing under the clock tower. And we got ourselves a gizmo. Cool. How many puzzles have we solved, by the way? Oh! Cutscene time. Neat. We can finally pass through the clock tower to the north side of town. How exciting! Can't wait to see what's in store for us there. It's very exciting. However, there was someone else we could talk to outside the clock tower. So that's what I want to do first. This is like... This is how I play games, right? I'm a, very much a completionist. I like to explore all the different routes, etc. Is it true that there's what they're saying about a murder at Reinhold Manor? A murder in our little village. The very thought gives me goosebumps. And a great idea for a novel. Oh, excuse my insensitivity. I'm just always on the lookout for new ideas. How can I help you? We're looking for Raymond. Have you seen him around? Mm, no, nah, I can't say that I've seen him today. But if your search around town has turned up nothing, he's probably at the park or in the tower. You know, somewhere the villagers don't normally go. The tower, huh? Oh, you should stay as far from that tower as possible. There are all sorts of bad rumors about it. Oh, really? Sure seems that way. We keep running into people who say that. <laughs> Just what are the rumors? Just, you know, bad stuff. <laughs> How incredibly specific of you. There's something really scary about that tower. That tower. I mean, the way they're uh, portraying it now is certainly ominous, to say the least. Okay, so it looks like... Oh, yeah, we've solved 27. Wow. Okay, um, so, I mean, regardless, we are going north now. So we'll continue to do that. Um, the park is a potential location in the future. What's going on with this cat and the mouse? Look at that cat, Professor. It's not Claudia, is it? No, no. On second thought, it is a different cat. Yes, it's an alley cat. And judging by the way he bullies that poor mouse, a rather mean one at that. Aww. Ah, uh, yes, Luke. Speaking of mice, have you heard this one before? Of course. Too many mice. Oh my. Mice are famous for their ability to multiply at breakneck speeds. The type of mouse we have here gives birth once a month, birthing 12 babies each time. Baby mice mature and can give birth two months after they are born. You picked up one of these darling baby mice at the pet shop and brought it home the day after it was born. In 10 months from now, how many mice will you have? <laughs> this is really funny. Um, so... And brought it home the day after it was born. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually really funny. Um, I think the trick here is that we only have one mouse. 
and one mouse who we've guaranteed is not pregnant because it was brought home the day after it was born. <laughs> so they're gonna be there's gonna be one mouse um, just because you need two mice in order to multiply. And this is framed as being a math problem of sorts, but it's really really just a more common sense uh, tricky logic type thing. You picked up one of these darling baby mice at the pet shop and brought it home the day after it was born, in 10 months from now. Yeah. Um, mice are sexual creatures. They need a partner in order to replicate, so... You'll have one mouse. <laughs> please, please tell me this is correct. And if it's not, I mean... I think, I think this is the most reasonable answer. Yep. <laughs> That's really funny. That's actually hilarious. That's right, your mouse can't birth any babies by itself! <laughs> and that picture of the sad mouse was so funny. Correct. Excellent work, Luke. And we got ourselves another painting scrap. Wow, we're we're finding quite a few. I wonder how short or long this game is. Don't tell me. I don't like to know that before starting to play a game. Um, but just in terms of, you know, painting scraps, there are 20 of them, right? So, we have... This one we can use, um, I don't know, put it here-ish, maybe? We still don't really have a whole lot to work with. We can switch back again. Can maybe put this up here. Can we rotate pieces? We can, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, but this is a corner. Which is relevant. It looks like it maybe has the reflection of the window in it or something. Honestly, I should just go back. I'm not going to be able to do any meaningfully or meaningful, you know, puzzling with <laughs> those painting pieces in their current state. All right, let's chat with this lady who's been patiently waiting for us here as we chatted with the, the cat across from her. Hee <laughs> hee, what you what you doing? I can tell you want to ask me something, but would you mind solving my puzzle first? My little brother and I came up with this one together. Say no more, Lucy. I'm 37. Brother and sister. 40 pick rats. Put my thinking cap on. A boy and his big sister are sitting around the kitchen table chatting. You know, sis, if I took away two years from my age and gave them to you, you'd be twice my age, huh? Well, why don't you just give me one more on top of that? Then I'll be three times your age. Just, so just how old is each sibling? Okay. Well, this is some pretty basic algebra. Um... I guess I'll get something to write down. We could call, I don't know, the, the brother X. Or we'll call the brother B and the sister S, right? So if I took... So brother is talking now. You know, sis, if I took away two years from my age, so B minus two is equal to... And gave them to you, you'd be twice my age, is equal to 2B, right? If I took away two years from my age, so the brother's age minus two, and gave them to you... Oh no, not quite. So what we want to do is say S plus two is equal to 2B. So twice the brother's age is equal to the sister's age plus two. And then we'll need a second equation. So, well, why don't you just give me one more on top of that? On top of that, so in addition to the two, right? So the sister plus three is equal to three B. Interesting. So right off the bat, um, I mean, I can't really show you guys meaningfully, um, but this set of system of equations lends itself to the elimination method, where if you take the S plus three equals three B and then subtract the entirety of the equation, S plus two equals two B, you're left with one equals B, meaning the brother is one year old. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in, in context, because that would mean the sister would have to be zero. So that doesn't seem very meaningful. <laughs> a boy and his big sister. So that's another thing, right? The sister needs to be older than the boy. So where did I where did I go wrong in creating this, right? The 
the sister's age plus two is equal to three times the boy's age. Or, oh, I see. I see. If I took away two years from my age and gave them to you, you'd be twice my age. So it's not three times the boy's age, it's three times the boy's age minus two. Which makes a big difference in, in terms of the equation. And then we look at it again from the second equation's perspective, right? Well, why don't you just give me one more on top of that, then I'll be three times your age. So then we have S plus three is equal to three times in parentheses B minus three. And then when you simplify that, you get for the first equation, S plus two is equal to three B minus six. And then for the second one, you get S plus three is equal to three B minus nine. But that's also kind of problematic. Because those two equations don't intersect. So what am I missing here? Am I interpreting this incorrectly? I mean, just intuitively thinking about it, I'm pretty sure the way we're, what we're supposed to have is that the, uh, the brother is five and the sister is six, just from thinking about it real quickly. Um, but I don't know why my algebra is, is leading me astray. That's something I'm pretty proud of. Because if the brother is five and you subtract two, um, or is it the other way around? No, if the brother is five, subtract two, then, oh, and gave them to you. That's what it is, right? Why am I doing three times for both of them? <laughs> That's where I messed it up. Wow, silly mistakes, guys, silly mistakes. So you guys probably misheard and we're going crazy, but um, I did because I did it correctly the first time, but not the second time I redrew the system of equations So it should be s plus 2 equals 2 times b minus 2 So if you take two years from the boy's age and then give it to Give them to the sister then she will be twice the boy's age So s plus 2 equals 2 times in parentheses b minus 2 and then the second equation, I believe, is still correct. S plus 3 is equal to 3 times, in parentheses, B minus 3. And then this should give you a valid system of equations that actually intersect at some point. <laughs> so now let's try this again. S plus 2 is equal to 2B minus 4. And then S plus 3 is equal to 3B minus 9. We do elimination method again, where we take um, s plus 3 is equal to 3b minus 9 and subtract the entirety of the equation s plus 2 is equal to 2b minus 4 and we get that 1 is equal to b minus 5 so the boy's age is 6 and as a result um, we can then find that the sister's age is going to be using any either of the equations just plugging in the b is equal to 6 um, the sister should also be six. <laughs> but a boy and his big sister. It is possible that they're both six, given that they can be born nine months apart. So it's not impossible, but I didn't think that was likely. And I mean, just to check it, uh, let's think through this, right? You know, sis, if I took away two years from my age and gave them to you, you'd be twice my age, huh? Right? That makes sense. If the boy is six now, and the sister is six, and he took away two years, he would be four, and the sister had two years, she'd be eight. That's valid. And then, well, why don't you just give me one more on top of that? Then I'll be three times your age. That also makes sense, right? If the boy takes three years away, he would be three, and gave them to his sister, she would be nine, and she would be triple. So, they're both six. Wow, I can't believe I had as much trouble with that as I did. Um, I'm, I'm a math person, but I, I messed up my algebra. It's probably, if anything, due to just commentating throughout and, and recording. But regardless, um, yeah, let's, let's input our answer. So they're both six years old. 
and we don't need to worry about the whole big sister thing because it's possible. Oh, <laughs> she's not 66 years old. Um, how can I move to the boy now? There we go. So they're both six, and it's possible, even though she's the big sister, um, that they're the same age. Okay. Let's give it a go. That should do it. All right. That's correct. Wow, Every again, I has an answer. feel embarrassed about miswriting my, my equation as three times B minus two. That threw me off. Okay. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this. Was that too easy for you? Oh well. Hey, you know the guy from the mansion, Raymond? He may look sedate, but boy does he like the nightlife. He's buddies with that party animal Jarvis. Jarvis? I don't believe I know the man. Where might we find him? Well, you see, Jarvis isn't the type to place much value in being gainfully employed. At this time of day, he's probably lazing about around those steps to the north. Just head up north until you hit a fork in the road, then take the path to the right. Okay, I have to go now. Let's play again later. Sounds good to me. Cool. So, I'm always, always down for some math. Um, interesting, we found a hit coin in there. Uh, there's something a bit bleak and sad about this place. I agree. What's over here? Look, Professor, there's a puzzle hidden here. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm glad we inspected, though. Holy cow, 107. 107, that's, um, it's a big number. Is it prime? I feel like it is. That's pretty cool. This worm's life dream is to make it to the center of the apple. Complete this slide puzzle and help him realize his dream. With only eight pieces to manage, this task might seem easy, but it's probably harder than you suspect. Are we just putting the image together? Where's the worm? I'm, I'm kind of confused. Oh, I see. Okay, so we're supposed to rearrange the eight tiles in such a way that they... Um, that they form an apple around the worm. So let's think in terms of how we actually need to move the pieces. This tile in the lower left corner needs to end up on the, oh, oh, <laughs> something that totally complicates this is that some of the pieces, as you can see in the top left, top right, and bottom right, um, form multiple aspects of the apple so they can be used in multiple ways. Wow. Um, so what we definitely need is that the top, or like the four, I guess, cardinal direction pieces um, need to be in those specific spots. So I need to get this lower left tile to the absolute right. So in order to do that, we'll need to move this over, this up. We'll have to essentially rotate through, which is okay for now. Um, not, not, not like that. Oops. You can probably, you, I mean, you can definitely complete this in a fewer number of moves, but for now, this will be okay. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. Because now I have this in the other end of the, the spectrum. So how exactly do I wanna do this? Um, I'd imagine I'm gonna have to take advantage of the fact that these certain tiles have aspects from, you know, both corners of the puzzle, basically. Hmm. I want to restart. Yeah, this is going to be a toughie. Makes me think I'm gonna have to keep this like center piece open to kind of act as a a conduit for the time being. So we're getting pretty close. At that point, it's just those two bottom tiles. Um, so the question then is, well, if I were to kind of rotate everything, <clears throat> well, if I were to rotate, you know, all of like the outer tiles, right? 
um, 90 degrees counterclockwise, the I would still have two correctly placed and two incorrectly placed. <clears throat> I guess at the moment, <clears throat> more so than anything else, I'm trying to come up with a method, <clears throat> a more reliable means of going about this. think it's going very well. <laughs> Darn, that didn't even do much. <laughs> it didn't do enough, rather. <clears throat> I doubt <laughs> this requires 47 moves. That seems a little bit much. Hmm. <clears throat> this might be this is this is going to be a tough one. It's got to be, I mean, obviously you can see how the different types of moves can even happen in the first place, right? It's all got to be rotations um, in these sort of quarter, quarter circle type motions if you want to shift things around. things around like this and I think we're getting pretty close actually yeah I think I think we might be there <laughs> that's well, it here's my guess. <laughs> wow we did it um, hundred moves is way excessive but wow yeah so I mean how I was at least thinking about it, whether I was explaining it well or not, was in terms of rotating pieces around and then, um, I mean, knowing that you're, you're kind of shifting in these small four tile or six tile um, rotations and, and mixing the two of them together. But that's, that was, that was tough. <laughs> that was tough. Um, yeah, very interesting. I could do this one in my sleep. Very impressive, Luke. Very impressive. I don't know if that was just uh, an attempt at a pun based on, you know, a worm's dream being the title of the puzzle, but even if not, um, I hope it was, or I hope it was, but does someone live here? Possibly. Anything else interesting in here? The lamp? No? Okay. Then I guess we'll continue moving on forward. We're at the fork in the road, so we're naturally supposed to go to the right, um, despite Agnes pointing to the left. Um, or maybe it's pronounced Agnes, for those of you that have play, played uh, Bravely Default. Also, great game. Definitely with its flaws, but overall enjoyed. So the cafe hasn't opened for the day. Let's chat with you. Who are you? Are you Jarvis? Zap Bone. Huh. What's this? Yes, it's just as I suspected. I can tell from here, sir. You have something you want to ask me, no? Don't even try to hide it, sir. It's in your eyes. And ask you may after you solve this puzzle for me. <laughs> 
as is standard for everyone, right? Okay, here's an overhead view of a cluster of tropical islands. As you travel from start to goal, your objective is to visit every island exactly one time. The island folks say this can be accomplished with the addition of a single straight bridge. The only other rule is that your bridge can't cross over any pre-existing bridge. So where should your bridge go? Okay, um... So I think, I think this is also related to good old Euler. Um, right? Although now there are, there are multiple vertices that would have odd outings, so it's not quite as clear. Um, part of what's going to be difficult is that segment in the lower left corner. Yeah, that lower left segment corner, um, you can see that blue house, and then there's the island, uh, basically, these guys here. Um, these two islands. If you want to get from one of them to the other, you need to go through either that gray lighthouse or that tropical island. But once you've done that, you can't go back. Which means one of those two islands will always be unvisited. Meaning, and because I can't cross any bridges already built, um, that rules out the tropical island. And I need to connect the, um, the gray lighthouse to something else. So the question is, what is that something else? Hmm. And I'm thinking it's that purple house. I wish I had a better way to justify it mathematically. <laughs> it is different when, I guess, there's a defined start and end goal. Um, rather, you know, or compared to the bridges of Konigsberg. Rather than saying, oh, can you start somewhere and end somewhere in such a way that you, you know, achieve this condition. Um, this is a little bit different in that you have a predetermined start and end goal. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you connect the gray lighthouse to this purple house, you can start at the whale, go down, and then northeast, and then east-east, and then down, and then left, and then down, and then right, and then down, or like southwest, um, across the bridge we just created, then to the left, down, right, 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 down, goal, so... Yeah, um, is this breaking any of the rules? Single straight bridge, can't cross over any pre-existing bridge. Yeah, so let's do it. Luke, here's my answer. All right, let's see what they have Critical for the solution here. The key to anything, success. anything particularly enlightening? Now get out there and go enjoy that island paradise. <laughs> no, nothing, no particular strategy. Just as I suspected, a fellow detective, your skills at puzzle solving are formidable, sir. Dare I say they approach my own? Ooh, interesting. It's the eyes I say, they never lie, and when they do, I know. <laughs> they never lie, and when they do, I know. That's really funny. We've also, um, well, hang on a second, we were gonna ask you a question after we solved that puzzle, so let's ask. I'll be here at the cafe tonight, perhaps you'll join me for a bit of shop talk? Okay, that's good to know. Um, we've also accumulated quite a few gizmos recently, so... Let's see what we can do with them. I love those eyes. So funny. And then that's the tongue. Hilarious. So we're missing one, uh, potentially two, three, four, five or so. Six, maybe, gizmos. Getting pretty close. It's pretty clear what we're making. <laughs> but um, pretty neat. So the cafe is closed. Let's chat with you, Agnes. Oh dear, your fortune for this month looks abysmal. I recommend solving my puzzle if you want to avoid this terrible, potentially gory fate. Yikes. That's not exactly reassuring. One line puzzle two. Okay. 
The idea of one-line puzzles is to put your pen to paper and draw a, pa draw a shape without lifting your pen from the pad or retracing any lines. You can't, however, cross lines. Now that you're familiar with the concept, look at the four pictures below. One of them cannot be drawn with one line. Which one is it? Okay, so this is this is our Euler, um, this is our Bridge of Konigsberg problem. Let's take a look at this one in the top left first. I think the most difficult part is just counting all of the different vertices. Um, let's start in the lower left corner of the house. That is two vertices. If we go to the right, that is another two. And then another right would be two. And then another right would be four. Another right would be two. One up from that would be... Thanks, thanks dog. Um, another four. Going to the left, that's another four. And then... Really? <laughs> to the left again is three, up again is three, and then to the right is two. So that one can be drawn because there's exactly two odd vertices. A three and a three. And then I see a bunch of evens. So that, that one passes the test. Um, if we go to the right of that one though and look at all the different vertices on that, um, we have two here, two here, two here, two here and then we have another well we actually have multiple odd vertices here we have a three a three three and then three again so i think that's actually going to be the one that can't be drawn we should check the other ones just to be safe though um so if we look at the lower left pair of glasses there's one vertex um, with two and then the next one has four 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 four, 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 and then two. So that one is safe because it has zero or exactly two odd vertices. Also, I guess, it admit, again, sorry for my dog and the, the noise in the background. You know, quarantine and everyone's home and you can only control so much how much noise other people make. Anyways, um, let's look at the ribbon in the lower right. Uh, we have two and then four. And then I'm just moving, I guess, uh, counterclockwise, starting in the upper left. Two, four, two, two, and then a one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a one, two, three, four, five, and then a two, two, four, two, one, two, three, four, and then a three. Interesting. So I think, um, because that one has that one has two odd ones, surprisingly, um, that's drawable. So it would be the one in the top right that actually can't be, because it has four odd vertices. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty comfortable with that. I think I've got it. It's tough to uh, count all the different vertices and show what I'm thinking and what I'm pointing to, I obviously, yes. <laughs> given recording restrictions, but. Cool, we got that done. Nicely done. When examining a picture like this, the key to spotting a fake is looking at the areas where multiple lines intersect. When looking at these areas, take note of whether the number of lines running through is given point is odd or even. If all intersections contain an even number, or if there are two intersections that contain an odd, yeah. Awesome. Teaching some good, some good graph theory. <laughs> My, that was quick. Were you that scared of a month's worth of bad luck? Well, I'm sorry to say that there's nothing you can do to change fate. You'll just have to tough it out. <gasps> oh man. All right, and so now we are supposed to go to the right. Anything hiding in the bushes? There is, there's a hint coin. Let's see, we'll go to the right for now. I'm curious, ah oh, man, I, I wanna check the left. I'm that person that if I know which way is you know, the correct way to progress the story, I'll intentionally go the opposite to, uh, to explore. So I think, I honestly think we'll do that. I kinda want to. I hope, I mean, I don't think this would be the type of game to punish me for it, so regardless, we've got this person here. We are going to chat with them, though, in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, it was really fun going through the different puzzles. I know there wasn't as much story progression this episode. We really only moved a couple screens, but we went through quite a few puzzles, and that Apple one definitely gave me a run for my money. I stumbled upon some uh, algebra because <laughs> I wrote down the equations wrong, and... We eventually made it through, though, and we've now solved 32 puzzles. 32 puzzles, and they've all been really fun. And I hope you guys enjoy watching me solve them just as much as 
um, as I have fun solving them. And I guess maybe if you're not able to solve them again for the first time again, you know, like, well, it's, unless you have some, you know, mind erasing powers, uh, this is the next best thing. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.